What's up everyone, Kyle here. You're watching Driving and Vibing. Today's video is about RV renovations, but specifically five tips if you are interested in renovating your cabinet doors or closet doors, so stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thank you for joining me here today. So like I said in the intro, it's all about renovating RV cabinet or closet doors. This is something that can be a pretty easy solution to updating the look of your RV. We renovated our RV cabinet and closet doors in our fiber stream four years ago, and we just finished the process on our newly renovated Airstream Argosy. So I thought it would be a good time to share some tips with you of how to do it easy and make it look great. If you're an expert woodworker or you have a ton of experience with cabinets or closet doors, this video might be a little elementary for you. Today, I really want to let the average woodworker, average handyman know that it's not that hard to give the cabinets and closets a big facelift. Before we get into the tips, let me show you what we did on our fiber stream and our airstream. Four years ago, our fiber stream renovation was a pretty cosmetic thing. We didn't do much structural, but we hated the way the cabinet doors looked. So we simply used very high quality plywood, cut out to size and finished them nicely. As you see here, really giving the camper a warm natural wood feel. We did it for the closet doors as well. Now in the Airstream, you can see here that instead of the natural look approach, we used painted wood, but pretty much the same method. We'll talk about that method in some of the tips as we go forward. But this is kind of the feel of what we did on both our Airstream and our fiber stream to upgrade the look of the cabinet and closet doors. So let's get into it. Tip number one, this is a super simple tip that will save you so much time and headache. It's simply buy a framing square. These framing squares really help you get everything lined up perfectly. The challenge with an RV we found time and time again is that a standard leveling tool with the bubble doesn't always give you an accurate level because your RV has to be perfectly level in order for that bubble leveling tool to work. That tool essentially works with gravity and makes sure you're level to the ground. If your RV is not perfectly level, this tool can actually do more harm than good. We used the leveling square in our Airstream. This was a huge issue with the camper not being level, with everything being curved. We had to find what we wanted to level to in a tool that would help us level to that. And the framing tool did just that. So if you already have the cabinet box built out or the closet space built out, you can use the framing tool to level the doors to the existing space. Simple tip for tip number one. Tip number two, sanding is very, very important. So whether you are going to build your custom RV cabinet and closet doors from scratch or you just want to give your pre-existing doors a facelift, you're going to have to have the right sanding equipment. So let's start with using your pre-existing doors. You definitely want to rough those up a little bit with a gritty sandpaper, not to make it look, not to make the surface look gritty, but you want the paint to be able to hold. So if your cabinet doors are already super, super shiny and have an even surface, you're gonna to wanna to rough those up just a little bit to get the paint to stick. And always in those scenarios, use a paint that specifically grips to areas that are hard to grip to for at least the primer coat. Because we learned the hard way in our fiber stream as we painted the walls that a simple scrape of the elbow, keys brushing by, will rip the paint right off if you don't give it a good surface to connect to. But sandpaper is also hugely beneficial if you are building your doors from scratch. 
Whenever we cut our doors out, we wanted to make them look and feel very welcoming. So we sanded the corners with an extremely heavy grit sandpaper to really bust through those sharp corners. Once we did that, we rounded the edges just a little bit to give the whole door a nice curved welcoming feel with no sharp edges. A series of sandpapers as far as grits going from pretty gritty to quite fine come in handy during that process. So get yourself some good sanding tools and go to work. So tip number three is pick out your hardware with great care because the hardware is essential to the doors functioning properly within an RV. We did not want an RV or marine feel with our doors. We wanted it to feel like we were in a home. We wanted to have residential style handles on our cabinets and closets. And that's perfectly fine to do in an RV, but the hardware is important because we don't want those doors swinging wide open. So we got hinges that specifically close hard and stay shut. And whenever you open them up, they stay open in place as well. This helps keep the doors open when in use, but it also keeps the doors closed while going down the road. To reinforce these doors, I bought 60 pound magnets on Amazon. Now these magnets uh, don't weigh 60 pounds. They hold 60 pounds worth of weight. And they look so nice and they work so well. You might be thinking 60 pounds sounds like an awful lot to be pulling off or up whenever you're opening the cabinets. But truly, it doesn't take that much effort to open them, but it keeps them so tightly sealed. So the hardware is super important. If you're gonna go the RV route or the marine route, there are tons of latching options. There are tons of uh, nice, sleek looks. They're a little harder to mount and take a little more care and effort, which you can definitely do. All you gotta do is watch a YouTube video about it. But Either way, whether you go with an RV or marine feel or a residential feel, choosing your hardware is super important. If you wanna see any of the hardware that we used, I'll put those in the description in the comment section below. You can also read our blog article about this video, which will have all the tips and links listed out. Let's go on to tip number four though. Speaking of hardware, mounting hardware is a challenging process if you have a lot of cabinet doors or closet doors, you're going to be mounting a lot of hardware. This is whether you are just updating the look of your pre-existing doors or you're building a whole new door from scratch. Whenever you mount a handle or a hinge, having a template can come in handy. Templates for this will easily line up the holes of where you need to drill and you can drill the holes beforehand, have them perfectly lined up so the hardware fits. You can buy these in the stores, you can buy them on Amazon and they work perfectly. Or if you're cheap like me, you can make your own template fairly simply. All you need is a small block of thin plywood, quarter inch plywood works just fine and drill the holes out exactly to where you need them, which isn't hard to do. If you mess up, it doesn't really matter because it's just a quarter inch piece of plywood that, you know, you can get, a, you can cut down a lot of those if you have any problems making them. But we made a template and every time we needed a new piece of hardware installed or hinge installed, we could just hold that template up, mark where the holes were, down the next one, mark where the holes are, and there you have it. We can drill with confidence through the wood to know that whenever we mount the hardware, the holes will be perfectly lined up. But hey, I'm not against buying one because those are super simple too. And most of the hardware is a standard size, usually three inches apart or maybe two inches, but they come in standard sizes. So just see what type of hardware you're getting and buy a template for that if you don't wanna make your own. Let's move on to the last tip. Now, this one is for all of you guys that wanna make your own doors. It's not very hard, and this tip is buying the right plywood. If you go into the hardware store and select a very high-grade half-inch plywood, all you need is that plywood to make the doors. 
this is something that we learned and that has proven super successful in both our fiber stream and our air stream. If you get the finest plywood you can find that's a half an inch thick, the plies are going to be so much more dense than a lower quality plywood and you can sand down the side of the plywood to have it either perfectly paintable or perfectly stainable so it looks good whenever the side is revealed. You don't want cheap plywood and then try to paint it or try to stain it and you'll see gaps, you'll see you can't sand it pro appropriately. So getting the right type of plywood is very, very important and it can save you a lot of time. Now, the flip side of that is that plywood is heavier than the standard grade plywood. Even a nice birch plywood that's standard grade that has a wonderful front on it might not have the best sides. So if you get something like that to save on weight, you can make framing pieces that go around the plywood. That's what we did on our fiber stream closet doors. The framing makes it look a little bit nicer, a little more finished on the end, but let me tell you, it does take a lot of time and it also, uh, and for me, it's not necessarily worth it unless you're trying to save on weight and that is important. We actually did that in the, fire, in the Airstream on a few places, used slightly lower grade plywood so it wouldn't be so dense and it weighed about half the weight of the high quality stuff. So you can still finish it nicely and save on those pounds. Those are the five tips we have. Don't be intimidated to do your own cabinets, whether it's freshening up the pre-existing cabinet doors or building your own from scratch. The process doesn't have to be that daunting if you have just a few tools, a little bit of time, and put some care into it. You can have a really nice looking uh, kitchen area with updated doors, updated closets. Very cool. So. I'm glistening in here because this is the wood shop we work in right now for the Airstream and it is very hot outside today. So please don't mind the sweat. If you want to reference any of this info again, I'll drop the link below for the blog post. I'll also put some uh, of the things we mentioned down there below so you can reference them pretty quick. But thanks for watching us. Uh, I wish you the best of luck for renovating your rig. It can really spruce up the space and make it feel more like home. That's what we love about it. So give it a try yourself if you got the guts to do it. Thank you for tuning in, guys. See you next time. Later on.